Hi, I'm Kayla from Brain Body Better, and I'm here today to show you how to do Sudoku. Hopefully you read my blog post from last week because I explained why I think it's a great brain exercise. Today, I'm gonna to show you the different options in terms of levels and give you a crash course on how to complete it. Sudoku is usually a nine by nine grid like you see here. However, if you're brand new to Sudoku, you may want to start with something a little easier. This is a six by six option, or you can do a four by four. I'm gonna start with this one just to show you how easy it is. Step number one is make sure you have a pencil. Never do Sudoku in pen. Number two, I like to use a highlighter to divide my different sections. So in this puzzle, I need to find the numbers one through four in every row going across, every column up and down, and every section. So in this puzzle, I'm gonna start with the easiest. I see in this top line, the only number missing is a two. So one, two, three, four. The other easy place I see is this column on the side. The only number missing is a three, so one, two, three, four. Then here, it's missing the four, so one, two, three, four. Now you'll also notice that it works in the section, so one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So now I'm gonna look across. This is missing two numbers, so it's not as easy, and this is where the reasoning comes in. In this row going across, it has the numbers three and four, but it's missing a one and a two. But I know I can't duplicate any number, so I cannot put the two here because there's already a two in that column. So this is gonna be the one, and then this is gonna be the two. One, two, three, four. And then it's really easy if I go up and down just to finish off these columns. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then you'll notice it works going across as well. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It works up and down and in all the sections. So that was a four by four puzzle. Here's an example of a six by six puzzle. Again, I'm gonna use a pencil and I already put my highlighter marks in so that I can easily see the different sections. So in this puzzle, it's a little bit bigger than that four by four. So you need the numbers one through six in each row, each column, and each section. And same rules, everything needs to fit together perfectly, but without duplicating any numbers in any row, column, or section. So this is much more challenging than that other four by four Sudoku that I just showed you. In this one, I'm gonna take a different approach because there aren't that many numbers to start with. So I'm gonna look and I see that there are a number of twos in this puzzle. So I'm gonna go section by section and ask myself, does this section need a two? No, it already has one. Does this one need a two? No, it already has one. This one does need a two, but I know it can't be in this column because there's already a two there. Can't be in this column because there's already a two there. So it has to be here or here. However, there's also a two in that row, so the only place for the two go, to go in this section is right here. I used process of elimination. Make sure that you do not guess. There's no guessing in Sudoku. You always have to have a good reason for why you put a number where you did. Then I'm gonna come up here. This section needs a two. It can't be in this column, and it can't be in this row, but there are two places that I could put it, so I'm not gonna enter it in yet. This section also needs a two. It can't be in this row because of this two and it can't be in this column. So process of elimination means the two goes right here. Now I'm gonna come back up here because I think I can probably find where the two goes. I now know it can't be in this column, can't be in this column and it can't be in this row. So here's your two. So if I found all the twos in the puzzle Sometimes, if you're new to Sudoku and you have trouble with your memory, you might wanna take some notes at the top. I found all the twos, so I crossed it out. The next number that I notice is I see some two ones and two sixes. 
I'm gonna start just with the six. So maybe I'm gonna take a note for myself up there. And again, I'm gonna go section by section. As you get better at Sudoku, you're gonna see that there's better places to start. But if you're just getting started, you might just wanna start at the top. So this one needs a six. Can't be in this column, but it could be here or here. This section has a six. This section needs a six. It can't be in this row because of this six, and it can't be in this column because of this six. So the only place for the six to go is right here. So now I'll come up to the top. It needs a six. It can't be here, but there are two places. So that would be guessing if it filled it in. So I'm not gonna do that. This section also needs a six. It can't be here or here, but again, there are two places. So I'm just gonna move on. I don't have enough information. So I made a note at the top that I looked for the six, but I didn't find all of them. So I'm not gonna cross it out. And again, that's just a little strategy if you have trouble remembering which numbers you've already checked for. All right, next, I'm gonna look maybe for the number one. So same thing, if you're new to Sudoku, you can just go in order. So I'm gonna look up here. It can't be here because of that one and it can't be here because of this one, but there are two places. This section needs a one, it can't be here, but again, still too many places. I'm gonna look down here and I see this is probably gonna be a good place to look because there's a one up here and a one here. So it can't be in that row and it can't be in this column. So this is my one. And now here, it needs a one, it can't be in this column or this column. So here's the only place for the one to go. Now I might wanna quickly check the other sections that I, I skipped because I have more information now. I filled in a couple ones. So over here, we knew it needed a one. Now it can't be in this row or this column. So this is the one. Then I come back up here. It can't be in this column, this column, or this row. So this is the one. So I actually found all my ones so I can cross it out. As you start filling in more of the puzzle, then you wanna look for places that are just missing one or two numbers. So I noticed this column over here has a one, two, five, and six, but it's missing a three and a four. There's a three in this top row, so this cannot be the three. So the three has to go in the only other spot, and then this must be the four. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Then I'll do the same thing. I can look across here. I notice it has a one, two, three, four. It's missing two numbers, so it's missing a five and a six. This column already has the six, so that can't be the six. So this must be the six, and this is the five. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and so you wanna keep moving through the puzzle that way. So I'll look here, this is missing a six and a four. The six can't be here. So this is the six and this is the four. Going across or looking at the section, it's gonna be the same numbers. It's gonna one, two, four, six, so it's missing a three and a five. But here's an example. I don't know which one's the three or which one's the five. The three could go here or here and the five could go here or here. So I actually don't know which number it's gonna be, so I'm just gonna leave it for now. Some people do put little notes for themselves like this. When you get up to the nine by nine puzzles, I think you need to do that, but for a six by six puzzle, you usually don't need to, but just so you're aware, um, that is a strategy that some people use because it could be either number. Then once we get more information, we can narrow it down. So, We'll look and see where else we have just two numbers missing. And so there's there might be many options. You might see something different than I do and vice versa. But as long as you're not guessing and you're using reasoning, you're doing a great job. So this column has a one, two, three, six. So it's missing a four and a five. And I see going across here, there's a five. So that can't be the five. So this is the five. And then this is the four, okay? And then I'll look, let's see, we can look at this section. 
it's missing a three and a five because it's got one, two, four, six. So again, that can't be the five. So this is the five and then this is the three. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Now there's some easy ones to fill in. So in this column, I'm only missing one number. So I should go ahead and fill that in. So one, two, three. So I'm missing the four, five, six. And I do recommend actually tapping as you count to make sure you don't miss something. Same thing here, it's only missing one number. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Now going across, one, two, three, four, five, six. Then this section, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we are moving right along. And so now I can come back up. My notes up here said it was either a three or a five. I just put a five here, which means it can't be here. So this is the five, and then this is the three. And then going across, one, two, three, four, five, six. Up and down, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And what you'll notice is it works all three directions. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So if we counted every row, it would work perfectly. Same thing with every column. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And same thing for the sections. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Just make sure when you're at home doing this, you actually check every single row, column, and section. Um, I didn't just because of time, but as you can see, Sudoku is not as hard as you think it may be, and there's no math involved.